Coming up today on That LTD Life, we're checking out Snapper, a Mac-based screenshot tool that will have you taking the most beautiful screenshots of your life, even if you don't have an artistic bone in your body. It also has some really cool machine learning features where it will automatically redact sensitive information like email addresses or passwords. Now, the best part of this entire thing is that it's available for just five bucks, thanks to the folks at AppSumo who are running a code limited deal. If you've seen any of their other code limited deals, you know you need to act on this right away. I've got a link in the description. So if you wanna watch the rest of the video, that's fine by me, but you might wanna just click that link right now and go grab the tool since it's only five bucks. Now, for the rest of the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to use Snapper, how I set it up and how I'm using it day to day. All right, let's look at a few use cases here. If you spend any time on social media, you'll see developers sharing their latest features via a nice screenshot. They look professionally designed like they must have taken hours to get it to look so good. This is Brian Jackson, the developer of Perf Matters, one of my favorite WordPress plugins, and he's got a really nice looking screenshot of his tool right here. Or maybe you're a blogger and you want to capture some social media interaction because you're afraid it might get pulled down or edited. Well, let's say I have this tweet here and I wanna grab it. I can just engage Snapper. I'm gonna do so with a key command and we'll cover how to set this all up in a minute. But let me engage Snapper here and you'll see I've got these crosshairs instead of a mouse. And I'll just go ahead and select the tweet. I don't have to be very particular here. In fact, I'm purposely not gonna leave very much white room and let's go ahead and open this up. It looks beautiful. In fact, maybe a little too much white room. So I'm gonna reduce this setting here called inset. And there we go. Everything is looking really good. Uh, I don't like that background very much. So let me just change that over to how about rows? All right, there we go. That's how fast and easy this tool is. Now there's a lot more settings to go through, but before we do that, I just wanna show you how to actually turn this thing on. There's gonna be an icon in your menu bar after you get it installed. It looks like this. And of course you can click up there and just take a screenshot, but you'll notice there's a key command as well. By default, it's set to be kind of a fistful. It's control option command four. So I don't know about you, but I need two hands to do that. And my favorite key commands don't need two hands. So we can customize this. Let's do that right now. We're gonna go under preferences. And here we are, we've got two options for key commands. We've got the one to take a screenshot and open the editor automatically, which is the one that I use most of the time but we can also take a screenshot and copy it to the clipboard. So if you just wanna grab a screenshot very quickly and then paste it over into you know, your messages or something like that, there's a dedicated key command for that. So it's kind of nice because not everything needs to be edited. So for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to be Control Shift X because this tool is called Snapper with an X. Now, inside of these settings, you can also assign the default save location. That's really important, especially if you're just hitting save out of the editor and you don't know where everything went. So it's just gonna save to your desktop by default, but obviously you can change that to be anything you like. I also recommend checking this box right here to launch Snapper at login. That way your key command will always work and you'll know that Snapper is running in the background when you need it. Snapper is dead simple to use, but it's also kind of a power user tool. There's lots of key commands we're gonna go through in a minute that can allow you to use the tool really quickly. But I wanna point out this other kind of power user feature in my opinion, it's called default file name. So I can click this and then it's going to give it a marking like Snapper, so you know it came from that application as well as the date and time. Now, if I hover over this question mark, I can also have it assign a unique random string or a UUID. All right, that's it for the settings. We don't have to go too deep here. Let me show you how to actually use the editor because it's mind-blowingly simple and so flexible. So I'm over at the AppSumo website. I'm gonna grab a new screenshot here. I'll go over to Blue, one of my favorite tools I've reviewed in the last month or so, and I'll scroll down to the bottom where the plans and pricing are. I might want to just, you know, take a screenshot of this. So I'm going to engage Control Shift X. Remember, that's the key command that I set up. If you've still got the default, it would be kind of that control option command four thing. All right, so I've got this set up. I've got my crosshairs here and I can grab all of the plans and pricing here. Now, again, I'm gonna make this just like really lopsided. And there we go. I've got it open inside of Snapper. Now, the first thing that I see is I've got a lot of space on the top and bottom. I'm planning to share this over on Facebook. So what I'll do is just choose Facebook from the ratio sizes list. And then I've got a few options. I can do a timeline image, a highlighted image. Basically, these are just presets for different aspect ratios. I'm gonna choose timeline image. 
and right away it looks a lot better, but it's still pretty wonky. There's a lot of extra space over here. Now I could utilize that space by annotating the image or adding some text, but I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just have this automatically balanced by checking this box. And boom, my image looks so much better already. Now, because the tool is called blue, I'm gonna change the background. There's a lot of different options here. Here's what cool looks like. I think that's a pretty good fit, but I can click right down here where it says more, and there's even more to choose from, including plain colors if you're not a fan of the fancy backgrounds. I could just make it black if I want to. Or heck, maybe even no background. That way, it's just gonna be transparent. I think that looks really good too. For now, I'm gonna settle on sky right here, and let's go ahead and modify this a little bit further. I can control the padding, which will increase the amount of background that I have. Now it's still gonna stick to the aspect ratio, so you can see it's adding it in equal amounts on the top and bottom. I'm getting too far out now, so I'll have to zoom out to see it all. Now that's a lot of padding. I don't recommend using quite so much, but I just wanna show you, you can really make this image pretty big if you want. It's nice, no matter where I end up, my image always looks really good. And remember, inset was the area right around the image right here. So I can increase this even if I didn't do a very good job of taking the screenshot with enough white space around it. We've got options to unround the corners or make them super round. Somewhere in the middle is probably best. And then I can either crank up the shadows or turn them all the way off to make it much more flat looking. There's this option right here to redact sensitive information. We're gonna get to that in a moment, but for now I'm gonna skip over to where it says show watermark text. I'm gonna click on this and I can just add a watermark right to my image. So I'll say screenshot by clientamp.com. Then if I zoom in, there you can see it says screenshot by clientamp.com. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. All right, now when I have everything just the way I want it, I can save this as a preset. That's great because let's say you're regularly putting out those screenshot images and you wanna always have things be consistent, not constantly tweaking the little sliders to get them how they are. You can just go up to the preset option right here and create a new preset. I'll hit save and give it a name. I'll call it AppSumo pricing table and hit done. Now I'm zooming in and out as I use the editor with key commands because it's just intuitive to me. I've been using a computer long enough that I know that I can press command plus or command minus to do that. But there's a controller right here as well to zoom in or zoom out or even just have it fit the screen. There's all of these other options down at the bottom as well. And like I mentioned a little bit ago, I love the power user centricity of everything, if that is a word. So I can drag things. So if I wanna maybe share this, I can just drag it right here and now I can put it into another application. Like if I wanted to share this image on Facebook, it's so easy. I can just grab the drag me little six dots, drop it inside of my post and there I'm good to go. As soon as I drag it someplace else, the editor also closes. Now you might not have been done with it. Maybe you wanted to share it on Facebook, but then you still wanted access to it to reformat it for something like Twitter. Well, you just go up to the menu bar here and you can reopen the close screenshot or you can press shift command Z to get it back. All right, so here we go, it is now back. I can easily format it for Twitter. Let's say I was making a profile header. Well, boom, there I go. Now it would be weird to put this as your profile header, but you know, you do you. All right, next let's talk about annotation. That's marking up a screenshot that you've already taken. Now, of course you can do this with taking a screenshot and it shows up in the editor, but I wanna give you another use case. What if you are trying to give feedback on an image someone sent to you? Like in my case, I have a graphic designer that helps me with thumbnails and maybe I wanna give them some feedback on a thumbnail. In Snapper, I can just choose open from file, or if it's on my clipboard, I can open it from the clipboard. I don't have to take the screenshot with Snapper. This time I'm gonna choose open from file, and here is the thumbnail I wanna provide some feedback on. I'll open it up, and notice that it automatically applied to the previous template I had set up. I'm gonna go ahead and just go to the default preset here, and I really want none of the other features here, so I'll just choose no background and turn off the inset. All right, that's close, but I also need to turn off the rounded corners. Okay, looking good. We'll turn off the watermark too. Now I could save this as a template for sure so that if I'm doing feedback, I don't have to go through and change all those sliders each time. I'll just call this preset no style. Now I'll press command one to zoom to fit and let's give some feedback here. Uh oh, I left the shadow on here. I definitely don't want that. So I'm just going to drag the shadow all the way down to zero and it automatically updates my preset. My preset is going to be reflective of whatever I do to the sliders afterwards. 
So if you find yourself needing to make changes, definitely go to new preset before making any changes if you wanna keep the old version around. Just to show you it works, I'm gonna to go to the pricing table preset and then I'll go back to the no style and no shadow this time. All right, now let's talk about annotation. So there's a lot of things we can do inside of this tool. Of course, we can add text. I'll press one for text, but it's this icon right up here. In fact, the key commands are right there. One, two, three, four. They get cooler, just hang with me. So I'm gonna add some text in. I'll say, try a new font. And I can select this and of course change the color if I want. Maybe I'll do like a purple color. All right, so here is my feedback. Now remember, I pressed one to add the text. If I wanna add some more text, I can press one again. This time I can continue pressing one and I can see a wide range of different font sizes that I can easily choose between. So in this case, I wanna maybe make it a little bit smaller to tuck it right over here. Okay, so there is some more text. But what about arrows? Arrows are very important, especially if you're sharing something on social media. Arrows can really make your content get more clicks. Everybody knows this. I'm surprised it's still true, but it definitely is. So I can, of course, click up here or press the two, and now I've got an arrow. As I move this around, it kind of intelligently, you know, angles itself. It's, it's kind of fun to play with. There's other styles of arrows as well. Maybe I press it again, and now I've got one that's situated like this. I can have a point up here or point at the man. You know what, I don't like this one. Why don't we try a little curvy one or a straight arrow? Of course, if I decide I don't like any of these annotations, I can always click on them, maybe just press delete and it's gone. If I wanna add it back in, I'll just press two and there's another arrow. I can also click on them to change the color or move it around after the fact as well. Now the number three is the redaction tool, but there's also automatic redaction. So I'm gonna save this for just a little bit later on. And we're gonna skip over to number four over here, which is our shapes. We can add all sorts of shapes. Let's say I wanted to put a box around this, or maybe I wanted to do a rounded box around that, change the color. Of course, you also have circles or ovals by extension. We can make it a perfect circle by holding down the shift key. And then there's just straight lines as well. So we can add a line if we want to maybe divide something up. All right, so I'm all done with my annotations. I wanna go ahead and send this back to my designer. So the easiest way for me to copy this to the clipboard is simply just to click on the background twice. Just double click anywhere on this gray area and now it's copied to my clipboard. Snapper can also copy text out of any image. So let me give you an example here. Let's say I wanted to copy this text right here. Well, I'll engage Snapper with my key command that I set up earlier in this video. And now I've got my crosshairs. I'll select the text that I want to copy. And it opens up in the editor, of course, but I can also go up to the menu here and go to detected text. And every screenshot you take, it's just going to detect the text. And I can click, here it is, budget online course platform. I click that and now it's on my clipboard. Here, I'll prove it, I'll just paste it in. See, it works. All right, let's talk about redacting data because that can be very critical for screenshots as well. I've got a note up here. I'm gonna take a screenshot of it with Snapper. And here we go, I just need that part, that looks good. Now notice right away, it automatically redacted my email address. There is a little gear icon over here and if I click that, you can see that I have it set up to automatically redact email addresses. Look at the original, it definitely had an email address. Look at the finished screenshot, it looks great. It even kind of put it in the lower right hand corner here with a nice background, but the email address is hidden. Now, what about IP addresses? That's kind of a nerdy thing. What can it do with the IP addresses? Well, let me check this and boom, it found it right away. Now I did get a little false positive up here. It grabbed the time, but no big deal. I can always redact things manually as well. So I'm just gonna turn off the automatic redaction, which I think is good to just leave on as a safety precaution. But if you really want to redact something on your own, that's key command three, which will just pop open the little redactor and you can see as I hover over stuff, boom, redacted. Redacted, super easy. I can also redact a full line if I need by just clicking and dragging and I can make it as big or as small as I want. Personally, I like it when it just grabs the information. It feels really good, like it feels almost magical to not to overuse that word, but I can you know very easily just select word by word the information I want redacted. It looks really pro. Whereas if I draw the rectangle, it's always gonna look terrible. If you're curious, the other types of information that can be redacted automatically include credit cards as well as API keys and passwords. Now you can change the color of the redacted color, but it doesn't do any blur effects or anything. That might be something I'd like to see them add in. 
Also, if you're security conscious and you're worried that it's able to detect passwords and email addresses and might do something malicious with that, don't worry, all of that is done locally using the Apple Vision framework. That's something that's built right into Mac OS. Okay, the last thing to cover in this video is how to add an additional Mac because maybe one device is not enough for you. We still get an overall discount versus just buying, I'm on the pricing page right here. So if I were to buy two Macs, it's gonna cost me 55 bucks. Well, with the AppSumo deal, you can get two Macs for 25 bucks. So it's still over 50% off. Here is exactly how to do that. After you get your AppSumo code, you redeem it, you're using it on one Mac, you're gonna to come to the pricing page and then you'll scroll down till you see License Manager right here. Click on that and it's gonna ask you for your email address. So just use whatever email address you used when you originally set up your code. This is gonna send you a link to your email. Notice it expires in 24 hours. So this is not like a permanent link you'd wanna save. Here is my link. I'm just gonna click this to open it up and I can see my license key here. Now, if I go over to this purple button, it says view details, I can actually buy more devices right here. If I click on buy more devices, I can add as many devices as I want for just 20 bucks more. Like there's no limit. You can add as many devices as you want. You can see with their pricing plans here, $80 for three devices, whereas we would get this for 45 going through AppSumo. So overall, it's an amazing deal. So that is Snapper. Go ahead and grab your code with the link in the description. It's only five bucks right now, but that is a limited time deal. It is not going to last. By the way, clicking that link does help support the channel. So thank you to everybody who has done so. That's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you check out clientamp.com for our free email newsletter and online courses. Leave me a comment down below if you're lucky enough to grab the $5 Snapper deal. I wanna know what you think of it. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video.